So the last part that I want to talk about here for object-oriented programming in JavaScript is um, methods and kind of uh, class prototype methods. Basically methods that you're attaching to um, a constructor or a, an object type that you've previously defined like we've done here with person. So, you know, just like in object-oriented programming, I, I can say, you know, what I've said here already is every time I create a person, every person is going to have a first name and a last name and an age. And those are, you know, stateful properties of an object or of the instance objects of that class. But I also want to be able to define behaviors. And the way I do that is by using functions. And, you know, I can say um, in here, just like I define properties, I can say this dot get full name. But instead of giving this a value of, you know, some object, I say it's a function. And I can, you know, write the implementation right here. I say return this dot first name plus space plus this dot last name. So this is saying every person, because this is in the scope of the person constructor, this is saying every person has this behavior called get full name. And for you know any person that I invoke this on, it will return me this string. So just to test that, I could say something like, you know, I, I don't feel like using an alert. Let's try something else. Let's say um, document dot body dot inner HTML is equal to main dot marsha dot get full name. So this should invoke the Marsha object's full name because as I can see that object right there Marsha was created with the person constructor right here so that means she has a first name a last name an age and a get full name function which I'm invoking right here so this is going to return me a string and it should put put that right in the middle of the document body so I refresh that and it did so um, there's nothing really to debug there I mean I could put it breakpoint here and see that it indeed, you know, I could do that, why not? So, put a breakpoint inside of there. So in here, um, when I refresh, we should be able to see that this last line here invoked the get full name method, and we can hover over this inside of here and notice that this has access to age, first name, last name, um, because this actually refers to the person, right? So, you know, it's it, it's very similar to writing, well, it's almost equivalent to writing, um, you know, an instance function or a member method in C sharp or something like that. So, um, let's see, how about, um, you can kind of keep doing this, you know, you can write as many methods as you want inside of the person class, but um, one of the things that is kind of cool in JavaScript is the prototype attribute. So even outside of the scope of that function, I can do something like this. I can say main dot person dot prototype uh, dot set first name equals a function of name. And I can say this dot first name equals name. So this is interesting because if you look at this, it, it's not within the scope of this constructor here. But you know, this is kind of the way code looks in C sharp. You know, we don't have we don't have our member methods in C sharp defined within the the scope of the constructor. It looks a little weird. So you know, JavaScript provides this prototype attribute so that you can kind of you know one after the other define these methods you know, as many methods as you want that are all associated with the person class instead of you know putting them all in the middle of the constructor which is kind of annoying and you know you might want to do it later conditionally right you might want you might uh, later on have some code like inside of an if statement where you want to modify the prototype instead of having it hard coded in the constructor so this is pretty powerful um, you know, set first name set last name So this gives you the ability to, on the fly, um, add methods to the class, pretty much. So, you know, like right before I printed out my mom's full name, 
I can decide to change it. I can say main dot marsha dot set first name to mom or something like that. So now instead of Marsha Santos, it says Mom Santos. And you know, just to do our due diligence, let's take a look at the breakpoint. So inside of here, set first name, we'll see when this gets called right here, it'll hit the breakpoint. And again, we are, because of this prototype, it kind of simulates us having defined this inside of the person class. So, you know, this, again, I have access to the age, the first name, the full name, function, and the last name. So all the stuff inside of the person, again, I have access to. So this is kind of, um, prototype was the thing that they added to JavaScript that really made it as close to object-oriented programming as they possibly could without having abstract classes and polymorphism and interfaces and things like that. Of course, you can accomplish those types of things with like other, you know, other techniques. But you know that that's really advanced, so I'm not going to talk about that too much. Um, but that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of everything that I, I want you guys to understand about um, how to, you know, create classes basically and objects. And you know, this kind of is, you know, what would be equivalent to a class in C sharp is saying, you know, here is, you know, I usually I would say, you know, don't even use methods inside of the constructor, just define them outside with prototype. Um, so that reads a little easier. We can say main dot person prototype um, dot get full name oops is a function. So now you have this nice kind of readable list of methods that are all on the person class and inside of the constructor here you can see a nice readable list of what the properties are. So in these four kind of nodes of code here are kind of um, a, a pretty readable and easy to see uh, description of what is a person. So you know based on just the simple ability to do this you should be able to create object types and be able to instantiate as many objects of those types as you want. Uh, you know, be able to set references to those objects, and you know, all in all, be able to maintain a grid of objects that are stateful and also have behaviors, which is, of course, what object-oriented programming is basically. Um, so, in the assignment, you know, I'm going to focus uh, the skill that I'm going to focus on is your ability to be able to do this, to be able to create um, a type of object with methods and properties that you're going to be able to instantiate multiple times so create a, create a bunch of objects based on you know the that class basically this is what I would you know this thing I have highlighted I kind of call this the class and um, you know be able to create multiple instances of that class um, and you know hold on to them and use them as kind of a data source for what you're going to show on the screen so you know the point being uh, in this assignment you know, don't worry too much about what it looks like on the screen, what you know, what your HTML looks like, what your CSS looks like, but really, you know, I want you to focus on writing uh, some clean JavaScript and being able to understand where your objects are, what they consist of. Um, you know, please, while you're doing your assignment, keep um, debugging it, keep um, doing things like this. You know, set a breakpoint, stop, and you know go around and hover over your objects and see what's inside of them. I mean, this is what I do all day at work anyway, so this is kind of the skill that you want to be able to um, you know, master, is being able to visualize what's in memory, what does it mean, what, what's going on where, what's pointing to what, what are the values. Um, so that's kind of essential, uh, is the skill of being able to you know, keep track of what you have, what's going on. So that's kind of going to be the um, the goal this week, and I'm going to try to come up with an assignment that tests you know your ability to to, to write you know good object oriented JavaScript. Um, so like I said, try to focus on that. Hopefully, I'll be able to come up with an assignment that you know isn't too HTML heavy and mostly uh, you know logic based. Um, 
So that's what I'm going to do now, and uh, hopefully you guys can uh, be at the point now where you're very comfortable with you know JavaScript and the basics. Uh, you know we've learned JavaScript, jQuery, um, you know a whole bunch of stuff now, and you know you should be at the point after this week is over where you're not you're not afraid of JavaScript anymore. I know some of you are very uncomfortable at first, but um, you know it's it's shouldn't be too bad as long as um, you have some basic programming skills. And as always, you know. Please rely on your fellow classmates and me if you have any questions. Um, use the discussion boards on Blackboard and um, you know, utilize all the resources that you have. I know it's easy to just kind of throw your hands up in there and give up, but you know, we're all here and there's a lot of resources that you can use um, to get some help. So you know, don't just sit there and kind of bang your head against the keyboard. Please you know, feel free to reach out and ask questions if you have them. All right, I will get your assignment ready and you know, I'll be talking to you guys on Blackboard.